All right, I'm here with one of the legendary highwaymen. What's your name? Jimmy Stovall. Hey, Jimmy, tell us about your history. How did you get into this? Well, I started out with Alfred Hare. Now, the, the whole start of the highwayman was uh, uh, a teacher by the name of Zenobia Jefferson. She uh, saw a talent in one of her students. His name was Alfred Hare. Well, she introduced him to uh, Beanie Backus, who was a well-known white artist here. And Backus taught him to paint. Now, he paid, his, paid for his lessons by making frames for Backus. Uh, somewhere uh, along the way, uh, another artist came in the picture by the name of uh, Harold Newton. And he was, a well, he was already an established artist. He just was painting religious scenes on velvet. Mm -hmm. so, he took, uh, he took up with Bacchus. Bacchus taught him how to do paint, uh, um, Florida scenes. And from those two guys, painting in their mother's backyard, uh, evolved uh, oh, 26, 27 other guys and one woman teaching themselves how to paint and making a living off of it. Uh, back in those days, uh, we couldn't put our work in, in galleries so we had to go out on the road. We would paint maybe at night or get up early in the morning and paint, put them in the trunk of the car, and we would go up and down US-1, uh, different side streets, and we would hit any, any venue like a barber shop, uh, doctor's office, lawyer's office, uh, so what, I mean, so, so far. Uh, and we would always go to a motel or something like that, one time it was classified as motel arts because there was just about every motel south of uh, Fort Pierce had a, had one of the highwayman paintings in each room. <laughs> That's the name. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So uh, uh, at that time we didn't we we were a loose knit group of people. You know, we were friends. We hung out together. We painted together. Um, but we didn't call ourselves anything. We didn't have a name. Well, later on, uh, somewhere in there late 90s, um, a guy by the name of Jim Fitch decided to do an essay on uh, black artists and uh, the group that he chose were, was us and once he finished his uh, essay, now he knew one of the guys, his name was Robert Butler and uh, he talked to Butler and Butler went down, him and Butler went down a list of names and the name that stuck out was the highway. <laughs> and that was because of the way we sold our paintings up and down the highway. Right. A couple of years later, or uh, months, whatever, Gary Monroe uh, read this article and uh, he decided he was going to do a, a, a book on us. And what he did was, uh, this is the book here. And uh, he came to town, he interviewed everybody, uh, but he could only find 26. And once the book came out, we read the book. We were a little disappointed because some, some, some of the stuff we said was changed or this and that, but this book is what they call the book. Uh, some call it the book. This is a book that put us on the map. Florida's African American Landscape Painters. Yeah. All right. Now you got an art gallery here in Fort Pierce. Yeah. Um, back in 90, no, 2000, I think it was about 2000. Um, I used to get a lot of calls at my house looking for different artists and uh, we, we decided that uh, there was about four of us decided okay we're gonna open up a gallery and uh, that way we're, everybody will have uh, an avenue to each each artist so they won't have to call try to call around this person that person we just opened up a gallery called the Legendary Highway Mazak Gallery and everybody know if you call here, you can get in touch with any artist. Right. So we open this place up, and uh, uh, my wife runs it. Uh, and this is this is what we do. Well, could you show us a a, 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 a painting or two, and that really uh, that you want to show us? And yeah. Well, we have a we have a variety of paintings. Uh, like like uh, this is one of the uh, vintage paintings. This is one by. Uh, Sam Newton. Now, this is the type of work that we used to do. Um, 
we, we didn't do a whole lot of detail. We would put sky, water, maybe a couple of birds, um, a couple of trees, and it would sell. Now these paintings sold, this painting here probably sold, this painting is about 30, 35 years old. Wow. It probably sold for about five, 10, maybe $15 at that lot. This is one by uh, a very close friend of mine, Livingston Roberts. Uh, he, that is beautiful. Yeah, he comes up with the, he came up with the, started putting more detail, um, uh, the more color, and we started to perfect our skies. Uh, back in the old days, uh, we put up a sky, something, uh, where is it? Uh, something like this, you know, just something to simulate a sky. Now, this is one by his brother, Sam Newton, I mean, uh, Lem Newton. And we put in a sky like that, but now we're, we're, we're more defining our skies more, like, uh, such as this one. Now, this is oh, one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is one that I did. This is one that you did? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, yes. take a look at this. Yeah. And then I'll show you some I did in oh, 1969. That is very good. All right, so show it. Uh, show us the difference. Okay, 1969, and then, oh yeah, put it up there next to the. Now, this is one I did in 1969. Okay, well I want to thank you so much for your time and taking out and letting all of our viewers know about your history. It's my pleasure.